Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. The Lord has been good to us. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's just continue to worship Him. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Lord, you are good. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, today, today is the day we come to praise you, God. We come to lift up your name, Jesus. Your voice makes a difference, God. Jesus, your name makes a difference. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus wraps me. Jesus, your word in Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Please stand as we go into our praise and worship segment for this Sunday service. In Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Herein is my Father glorified, that he bear much fruit, so shall he be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. O most righteous Father, O God, our King, our Savior, Lord God, as I come before you, God, hallelujah, I ask you, God, that I will decrease and you will increase in me. I pray, Lord God, that you will prepare the hearts, everyone that's listening, whether they be online or in person. Jesus. Open up their hearts and their minds to receive your word. I pray, God, that the word will penetrate their hearts. Hallelujah. I pray that the word will bring conviction to somebody that's listening right now. I pray, Lord God, that you will, oh God, use me, hallelujah, in a mighty way, Lord God. Oh God, fill my mouth with words, God. I pray, Jesus. God, that the anointing will be upon me because it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Yes, and so, God, have your way in this place, God. Move, mighty God. Speak to someone, oh God, that's listening as we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. My topic for this morning is stay connected to Jesus. Stay connected. If you are, stay connected. In the world, connections are important. We connect with family and friends, even strangers. And the goal is to link to find out what others are doing and to let others know what we are doing. When we are deprived of our media outlets, the world stands still. I remember, I'm not sure what year it was, it was in 2003, we had that blackout. Most of you adults will remember that. No power, everything was locked down. It was like blackness. And I remember I was working downtown and I had left. And um, thank God that when I, I left, I wasn't on the, on the subway because this was the subway was strong. But I remember I had to walk all the way from Queen all the way to Keel subway station to get a bus to go home. It was chaos. You know, people were so used to having their phones be able to connect. Parents concerned not knowing where their children are or if they're okay. So it was chaos. Can you imagine a world with no power, no electricity, no internet? You don't know what's going on. The world is like a standstill. So we rely on the internet and technology. We want to connect and be connected. During COVID, we were confined to our homes. Our homes were our place of work, school, businesses, and church. We were able to access information and share information via the internet. So we see that because of this pandemic, we're able to come in person into a building. We had to confine to our homes, but we rely on the technology. And the computer and the cell phone and the laptop is nothing without having a connection. Amen. Because the internet is what connects us with each other. So we rely on that during COVID. And finally, because some people were at home, um, they were connected to Jesus. And they were so used to having church home and being in the comfort of their home that there was no need for them to have that relationship. When we come in person, it's different. Right? We get to worship. You know, I hear my sister say hallelujah. You know, I want to say hallelujah. I hear you praying. I also want to pray. I see how you're pushing, and I also want to push. But being away from the presence of God and being home is like you, you, you lose that connection. Amen. Amen. And many people are not here because they get so comfortable being home that they lose that connection. And they're no longer here. 
And for those who are here, it shows that you were always connected. My God, amen. You had a relationship, a personal relationship with God. That even though you weren't in the physical building, but you had a personal relationship with God to be able to keep that connection going. My God, thank you, Jesus. The metaphor in John 15 is of a vine and its branches. The vine is the source and sustenance of life for the branches. Amen. And the branches must abide in the vine to live Amen. and bear fruit. In order for the branch to bear more fruit, they had to be pruned, trimmed, and cared for. Yes. Jesus, of course, is the vine, and the branches are the believers. With Jesus representing the vine, he is the sustainer and carrier of all that is needed. He is our source of life. In him we live and move and have our being. John chapter in John it talks about the I am statements. He is the bread of life. He is the way, the truth, and life. He is the door to salvation. He is the good shepherd. When we are the branches, we can rely on him to provide for all oh that we need. Jesus. In order for you to stay connected, you need to know about the God that you serve. You have to know about Jesus, who he is to you. You have to have that personal relationship with him. You have to know him for yourself. You need to know what he can do. He's my provider. Without him, I can't do nothing. Yes, I can try my best, but eventually it will fail. I will get tired. It will not succeed. But when you know the God that you serve and what he is able to do, you would want to stay connected to him. Even the very breath that we breathe is because of him. You think that you're here because of what you do. You think you're alive because you know what? I'm a good person. I exercise. I, I work out. But when you think about your life, you're here because of God. He's our creator. You're alive because of him. And it's all reason to give him praise and to be in a relationship with him. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Abide. Remain, stay, and endure are all action words that describe a choice. It is not forced or passive, but intentional decisions. God, when God created Adam, he created him with a will to make choices. God don't want any robots. He wants us to worship him from a pure heart. He doesn't want anything forced. He doesn't want no forced worship or any forced praise because he does not deserve it. He wants us to be sincere with our worship, sincere with our praise. So God, we have a choice. Jesus. And we have a choice to either remain in Christ or not to remain. The choice is up to you. Oh you have to make that decision. I could tell you what to do or how to remain connected. But it's up to you Hallelujah. to think about that and to say, okay, am I going to stay connected? Am I going to keep living my life the way I want to? But it's a choice. We look at Adam, for example. Adam had a choice to remain in a relationship with God by choosing to obey his word or not. He had a choice. God told him. If you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, this is what will happen. Yes. And Adam had everything going for him in the Garden of Eden. Right? So he had a choice whether I'm going to eat of this fruit or not. Jesus. The responsibility of remaining in God was placed upon Adam. And we see what happened as a result of the choices that he made. Yeah. Sin entered into the world. Jesus. He was no longer in the presence of God because of disobedience, which is a sin. Right and because of that now, it, 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 
it has it's um, it flow down to his children and, and grandchildren and, and to our parents and grandparents and down to our children, down to us because of disobedience, because of that, that connection with God is lost. There was a disconnect because of that. But thank God for Jesus, for him dying and shedding his blood, we have access to God. We can have a relationship with God. Our relationship is now restored because of the blood of Jesus. So now we have a choice. We can't say, well, you know, I don't did this and whatever. We don't have an excuse because Jesus had paid the price for our salvation. He has reconciled us to God. So now we can boldly go to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and grace in time of need. So it's a choice. You have a choice to remain or not. Abiding in Jesus is very vital and necessary for our spiritual growth and development. Why? God knows our frame. He knows everything about us. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. We are like sheep that needs a shepherd to guide us, to protect us, and provide for us. Because God knows that if it's up to us, we will be led. We're easily led astray just like the sheep. They're easily led astray. They need a shepherd to guide them. And so because God knows us, he knows our intention, he knows everything about us, then he knows that we need to be connected to him in order for our spiritual growth and development. Jesus is the center of all we know, do, and or as Christians. Everything revolves around him. We are only able to be like him when we are connected to him. Yes. If you want to be like him, you have to be connected to him. You have to take time out to know about him. Know what he's like. Know about his character. Jesus. Hallelujah. Get to know him. Get to know him for yourself. And you need the help because you can't do it by yourself. We are not righteous without Jesus. We, we can't always do the right thing. It's hard. Many times we, we want to do what is right, but we end up doing the wrong thing. Many of us are impatient and, and we're trying to have patience. And God knows I can't do it on my own. So we need to be connected to him. So we are able to be like him. And to be is representative in the world. We are called to be salt of the earth. We are called to be a light in the darkness. We are called to be a city that's on a hill. And in order for people to see the light in us, it means that we have to abide in Jesus. It is essential that as believers, we remain connected to Jesus even through the purging process. And that is the hardest thing. When things are going good, you know, yes, I can read my Bible, I pray. But when you're going through the purging process, it's where you're being tested. Hebrews 12, verse 6 says, For who the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son who he receiveth. My God. Just God uses chastening as a tool to develop certain Christ like qualities in us. It is not a sign of his rejection, but him treating us as his children, just like how a father and a mother has to discipline the child. It's not so much to hurt them, but to correct them. Yeah. If you see your children is going in the wrong direction or doing something that is wrong, you as a parent have to let them know and direct them to the right path. Jesus. 
If you see your children going the wrong path and you say nothing, you, you don't love them. You don't care about them. But when you love your children and you want the best for them and you want to see them get a head in life and you see them going the wrong path or making the wrong mistakes, then you're going to correct them. And sometimes the way we correct them may not be, you know, it, it may not be something that they enjoy. It may be taking away things from them. Right? Things that they, that they don't think is it's, it's nice, but it's for their own good. It's to correct them. So when we're going through purging, just as how the branch has to go through a pruning process in order to bear more fruit, we as believers will experience painful times in our lives. So God will use situation to teach us, for example, how to be patient. How to have self-control. How to show love. How to build our faith. So he will use situations, trials, sufferings, pain. And many times when you're going through, just don't say, oh, it's the devil. But try to ask God, why am I going through this? Are you trying to teach me something? Is there something in my life that I need to change? So we have to ask the question. Because not everything is of the devil. And it's not anything bad that you have done. But God is bringing you a purging process. We talk about the potter and the clay. We sing the song, Have thy no way, Lord. Thou art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will. We sing that song, but when God is actually doing it, we don't like it. Not everything you're going to enjoy. Not everything you're going to enjoy. There's some things that God will allow to happen to you. There are situations he will put before you because he wants to teach you something out of that experience. Yeah. There is a lesson in that experience. And we talk about the, the fruit of the Spirit. I'm just going to read um, the fruit of the Spirit here. It says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Not the fruit, but the fruit singular. Yeah. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, love, suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So when we are going through that purging process, God is trying to develop in us these qualities. We said we want to be like Jesus. It will cause you pain and grieve. And suffering because as we read in the Bible how the things he had to go while he was here on earth. So to be like him, it's not an easy process. You want to go through some trials and some difficulties. But rest assured that it's for your own good. Amen. We sing the song, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Hallelujah. Don't judge me. Don't criticize me because God is working on me. He's making me to be a better person. But it will cost me some, some pain to get through the process. The Lord used it to remove anything that is hindering our spiritual growth. So if he sees that something is hindering our growth, he will remove it. If it's, if it's your friend or your family, if he sees that there is a hindrance to your spiritual growth, he will remove it. Jesus. And while you're going through the purging process, it's during this time we need to stay connected and focus on Jesus. Yes. It's not time to disconnect. It's not time to give up and, and throw in the towel. That's the time you need to stay connected. Because he's the one that's doing the purging. He's the one that's molding you. So you have to stay connected. I know sometimes it hurts. And sometimes it brings tears. But stay connected. Yes. While you're going through the purging process. It's not easy. You may wake up each day. And the situation remains the same. You might be praying. And asking God. Why am I still enduring this? Why is this situation still here? Why haven't you come?
come through for me? Why am I still struggling? But trust the process. Trust God. God knows what he's doing. It's painful, but trust God. There's a reason why he says to abide in me. Yes, amen. Because he knows that without him, you, can't, you, you cannot be where you're supposed to be. And so while you're going through, stay focused on Jesus. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank By remaining in the difficult times, we are promised that God will remain with us. He will remain with us. He says, if you abide in me, and I will abide in you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is a present help in time of trouble. If we give up, then we will fall away from the protection of the vine, or in this case, from Jesus. The enemy is desire is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes, yes. And he will use obstacles and things, and even if there are on trial that you're going through or are suffering, he will see that as an opportunity to, to lead you away from the presence of God. And so you have to remain. Don't leave the protection of God. But when you leave the protection of God, you're open for the enemy's devices. You're open for his darts. You're open for the things that he brings your way. So it's very important that no matter what you're going through, you stay under the protection of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 91 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you have God's protection. You have God's protection. So why are you leaving the protection? Because it's the, the burden is too hard, the trials is too hard. Stay under the protection of God because He guarantees protection. He will give His angels charge over you. Hallelujah. No weapon that form against you shall prosper. Once you're under His protection, you are safe. I'm safe and secure from all alarm. So do not leave the protection of God. Stay. Stay. I know it's hard. I know sometimes it's rough. But God is saying today, stay connected through your trials. It's a hard road to travel and a mighty long way to go. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Hallelujah. When you know the God that you serve, you have a confidence that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So stay under protection of God. Stay under his wings. Hallelujah. Because he will keep you through the purging process. Through the fire, through the water, through the floods. No matter what situation you go through, God is there to protect you. He's there to help you. So let's remain, remain connected. Amen. Amen. So the question is now, how do we stay connected to Jesus? Right. Like how? I hear what you have to say about what it means to abide or why we have to abide. But how do we stay connected to Jesus? John 15 and verse 7 says, If he abide in me, and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he will, and it shall be done unto you. So to stay connected to Jesus, it requires that remain in his word. Glory to God. Remain in his word. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. We don't always have the, 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 the physical Bible with us. We don't have our phones with us all the time. So it's very important that we memorize the word of God so it stays in our heart. So when you're going through a situation or 
an obstacle, then right away the word will come back to remind you. So it's very important we just not read it because we're asked to read or just to go through it. But let us memorize it. Memorize it. And also let us meditate upon it. Because there is, God's word is like, uh, there's some sustenance in the word of God. It says the word of God is quick, which means it's alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So when you take time out to, to meditate upon the word, draw every sustenance and nutrients from it, then it will remain. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds the mouth of God. So it's important to take time out, not just to read the word, but meditate upon it. If you read a verse every day, over and over again, then you have time to think about it while you're driving, while you're cooking. And eventually it will stick. Because you take time out to get to, you know, understand what it means. Over and over and over again. So it's important that in order for us to hide the word in our hearts, we have to meditate on the word. Amen. Memorize and meditate on the word. In the parable of the, the wise and foolish builder, the one who hears God's word but does not do what it says, is like a foolish builder Amen. who builds his house on the sand, that house will be crushed in a storm. Yes. The one who hears the word of God and obeys it is like a wise man that builds his house on solid rock. Jesus. So the wise man take time out to search the word. And know what the word of God says. And, and he applies it. But the foolish one, all he does is just hear. What doesn't really think about it or put it into action. Jesus. That house will stand up to any storm. Wise people build their faith on the foundation of God's word. So we have to build our life on the foundation. God's word is our foundation. We live into a world that has its own beliefs, has its own rules and structures. But as child of God, the Bible, the Word of God, is our guide to live in, in this world. And so it's very important that we take time out to search the scripture. Pray and ask God to open our understanding so we can understand the Word. Many of us, we try to understand it based on our own intellect. But we need God's understanding. God. Open up my understanding, God. Oh, to understand your word. Oh, so my life, hallelujah, can live my life according to your word. Jesus. Keeping God's word continually in our hearts and minds. And making it the guide for our actions. So we have to make it Jesus. for our guide and our actions. It's not just to hear a good word a pastor preach or, you know, so-and-so teach a good word. But we have to put it into action. Let it be our guide. When we remain in God's word, the things we ask God for will be the things that he is ready and able to give us. Amen. It says in the latter part of verse 7 Amen. that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he will, and it shall be done unto you. Yes, Lord. So when we remain in God's word, we will receive answered prayer. Yes. So it's important that we remain in his word. Jesus. The second of how to stay connected, John 15 and verse 9. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So to stay connected to Jesus, it requires that we remain in his love. Jesus calls us to a life of holy intimacy and personal devotion to him. This 
is possible because of God's love for us, which he has poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 and verse 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And we go down to verse 8 of Romans chapter 5. It says, But God commended his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God demonstrated his great love through Jesus dying for us while we were still sinners. Jesus. Hallelujah. We remain in his love by pursuing spiritual intimacy and communion with him and also obeying his commandments. I will talk about obeying his commandments on my third point, but I want to focus on the spiritual intimacy and communion with him. When you love someone, you want to spend time with them. You want to be in your presence at all times because you're so full with love. And so what God requires of us is spiritual intimacy and communion. Yes. Drawing near to him in prayer and being in his presence. Jesus. David says it like this in Psalm 27 and verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. My God. God requires us to spend time with him. Yes. Many times we're so busy going about our daily routine that we don't have time to spend with God. We don't have time to commune with him by prayer because we're so busy. But it's not just, you know, coming to church and going through the routine. It's what you do when you leave. Like your personal life, your, your personal relationship with him. So he wants to have that, that communion with us where we take time out to talk to him. And during that talking, he will reveal things to us. We get to know him better. We get to know what his will is for our life. But we have to take the time out to seek him in prayer. Yes. Seek him in prayer. It's a, it's a two-way communication. You're just not doing the talking, but you're, you're listening. Because while you are praying, sometimes I will lay a word on your heart sometimes. Many times I'm praying, and I just lays a word on my heart. And, you know, I said, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. So it's during that conversation that God will reveal things to you. It's not doing some kind of praise and worship, but in that intimate moment. Yes. You lock away in that secret place. Do you have that secret place where it's just you and God? You and Him. You can tell Him all about your troubles. Nobody has to use up on what you're saying, but it's just you and Him. He desires that fellowship. He desires that communion. So we have to take time out to, to talk to him, get to know him, get to understand him. Jesus. And we need to be in his presence, worship. Because while you're worshiping, oh God, I'm telling you, when you're connected to God and you come in his presence, nobody has to talk to you, nobody has to force you because you enter in his gates with thanksgiving yes. and you enter into his courts with praise. So when you come into the presence of God, you come ready to charge up and ready to worship because you're in his presence. You are in connection with him. You don't just come here on a Sunday to get connected, but you're connected from in the wee days. So you know the individuals that are being in connection. You don't have to pretend. You can sense it. You can feel it. So when we come into his presence, you don't come burning down. He says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So when you come to God's house, you're so sad. Your mouth is so closed. You're in the presence of God, there is joy. But you have to 
instructions. An example of this is in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. When God gave Saul specific instructions, utterly destroy the Amalekites. Destroy everything. But Saul, I don't know, he probably think he needs God and God needs him or you know, let's just hold back the best of the animals. Let me just bring back the king, you know, and say the people told me to do it. But you are the leader. God gave you the instructions. First Samuel 15, verse 22 says, And Samuel said, Had the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. God requires obedience more than outward service. Anyone can lift their hands. Anyone can do a great dance. All right. yes, God. Play the keyboard so good. You know, the good, nice yeah. prayer. Hallelujah. Outward services. But God knows what's on the inside. Yes. God knows that you're not obedient to his word. And so we can fool man, but we can't fool God. Right. God says that man looks on the outward, but God looks on the inward. So you might appear to me, oh my God, you're saved and you're sanctified. Man, you are connected to God. But it's called an outward service. Because inwardly God knows that you're not following his commands. And so it's important that when we come into the presence of God and we do things or we're asked to do things, make sure that we do it from a pure heart or our heart is right. You may get away with it, but God has record of it. So it's important that we obey. When nobody is watching you or following you or looking to see where you're going or what you're doing, God sees everything. For he's the omnipresent God. And so obeying God's word, remaining his command, is important for us to remain connected to him. No one be like Saul who disobeyed, and as a result, he turns of God left him. You know, he was miserable. You know, he was spirit upon him. No one be like Adam that disobeyed, and then he had to let the presence of God. We want to obey the word of God, because obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we want to ask the Lord to help us to obey his word. Yes. Even if we're not expecting the answer, we're not expecting, you know, the answer that we're looking for. Hallelujah. But yet we will trust his word. Uh, I remember um, the disciples were fishing, I think it was Peter, and, and God told him to, to go further to deep. Right. Peter said, he's not no fisher. You know how, how hard, how many hours I'll be, I'll be doing this and nothing? Nevertheless. But nevertheless, at your word. Yeah. Nevertheless, at oh, your word. Yeah. Glory to God. Nevertheless, at your word. I may not understand why, but nevertheless, at your word. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 God. You can stand up and finish your own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. In the world that we're living, it's so important, brethren, that we stay connected to Jesus. Look what happened. Nobody expected COVID. And those that weren't connected, they end up falling apart. We don't see them anymore. They have choose a different path. But when the storms of life are raging, we need an anchor. Is your anchor hold? And rip the solid rock. But this rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. When the storms of life are raging in my life, we need an anchor. And that anchor is Jesus. If you're here this morning and you know in your heart, that you are disconnected from God. You are not at the place where you're supposed to be. You don't feel his presence like you used to. You're not hearing from him like you used to. Remember those days you guys had that, that conversation.
conversation and you would hear it. It says friendship with Jesus, fellowship divine. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. So if you're here today and you know in your heart that you have lost that connection. Jesus. Things happen and you lost that connection. I come to church every Sunday, but I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I no longer read my Bible like I should. I no longer pray like I should. I've lost that connection. If you're here, don't worry about who's looking. You know, you know, God knows and you know. And the word of God says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And so I said before, you know, whenever I come to bring a message, I seek God forward. I don't, I'm not here to choose my sermon. I said, God, whatever you want me to say, I will say, God. Jesus. And so if you're here this morning, and you know in your heart that you're not where you're supposed to be, first you help me say, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. The altar is open. We're here to pray Jesus. for you. Hallelujah. God wants a relationship with you. And if you're here and you're not saved, he also wants a relationship with you. Amen. Amen. We are nothing without him. To receive his blessings, to receive the things that he desires of us, it requires that we remain connected to him. The, the problems you're going through, the struggles you're going through, God will use it as a way to develop these Christ-like qualities in you. It's not anything that you have done, but it's to develop you, for you to be a better person. And so if you're here this morning or afternoon, come and let's go pray for you.